Baker Salingham with Virtual Rubber Bullet. Today I want to share with you five of my favorite cleaning tips. Well, calling them favorites maybe is a little bit of a stretch. You know, cleaning is a necessary evil when it comes to any kind of cooking. But you got to do it. And I have five cleaning tips that I want to share with you that I found useful. So here's my first tip. Heating a washcloth in the microwave. Now, I hate running cold water to the kitchen sink. It's a long way from the hot water heater in the garage. We waste a lot of cold water just to get hot water so I can make a towel warm for cleaning. We do have a container that we keep off to the side and I try to collect cold water in that and I use it in the garden or in the fountain in the backyard, but inevitably end up wasting a lot of water here just trying to get hot water to this faucet. Take a washcloth, dampen it, wring it out really well, roll it up in sort of a jelly roll shape like this and place it in the microwave 20, 25 seconds. It comes out piping hot. Be careful. It can get very hot if you overheat it too much. You get a nice hot washcloth. You can use it for cleaning around the kitchen, cleaning your grill lid, your grill surfaces, uh, work surfaces around the grill. You can even use it to wipe off your face if you want to. Heating up a washcloth in the microwave, I think is a great tip. My second cleaning tip is cleaning the lids and the threads on jars and bottles. Now, sometimes, you know, if you don't do this, you can't get the lids off, they will cement shut. You end up with a situation like this where you have sauce or liquid all over the inside of the cap and all over the threads. In fact, in these metal caps, if you let this sit here long enough, it will begin to corrode and rust the cap, which is really kind of gross. It looks bad and it even smells a little bit funny. So I like to keep these little guys nice and clean. Now to do that, if I have run hot water to my kitchen sink, I can simply rinse these under hot water. And if you do this often enough, it doesn't take a lot of effort to clean these out. If you have gunked up stuff in here, you'll want to maybe put some hot water in a little bowl and then put the lid inside the bowl with some hot water, let that sit for maybe five minutes and it'll just rinse right out. Another thing you want to do is you want to clean the threads. Again, if you do this often enough, it's not hard to do because it doesn't solidify. If it solidifies, you will want to use a nice warm towel, perhaps one that you've heated up in the microwave, I don't know, and just go around those threads to clean them off. Clean off the top as well because the top surface will transfer to the inside of the lid. Make sure that you do not use your disgusting kitchen washcloth that you have sitting around here. That it's got as many germs or more than your toilet probably has on it. Use a nice clean cloth that you have wetted and you use just for this purpose right now of cleaning that off. Got another bottle here. This is a Franklin, well, actually the Franklin barbecue one has been done recently, so it's in good shape. But clean lids, clean threads. You put these away in the refrigerator. You come back to this in a week, a month, or a year. It'll come right off, clean as a whistle, no sticking of the threads and the lid. That's my tip number two for you on cleaning. My third cleaning tip for you is to wrap handles with paper towels to keep them clean. Now this is not something I figured out myself. This hack came from my friend Harry Sue of Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Harry had a neat little hack. He took a paper towel, I fold this one in half, and you place it around the handle you just wrap it around tightly, bring it around the top, and then take some scotch tape, which I've already pre-torn here off to the side, and just use it to fasten down the paper towel tightly on the handle. I'm using three pieces of tape. And once you have got this wrapped with paper towel, you can, with gloved hands, you can handle this, you can operate the knife and all the grease and gunk stays on the paper towel doesn't go on to the these onto the handle portion you can't cover the head of the electric knife but you can cover the handle portion and once you're finished you simply just tear off the tape and take off the paper towel toss it out and this guy is just as clean as it was before you started now anything that has a handle you can do this to I've even seen photos of Harry Sue wrapping the handle of some of his grills 
with paper towels just to keep the grease off the handles and keep them clean. So use your imagination and think about how you can wrap certain things in paper towels to keep them clean from your greasy hands as you're handling and making barbecue. Tip number four is to wear disposable gloves while you're cleaning your grill. Now, I don't often do this. I, I put it off for a long time, sometimes days, even a couple weeks, and I get in the mood, I go outside, I open up my Smoky Mountain cooker, I've got a garbage bag out there, I start dumping charcoal and handling charcoal grates and greasy cooking grates, and then I realize that my hands are covered with grease and gunk and ash, and I'm gonna have to do a good cleaning job of my hands after I'm done cleaning the grill. So you can avoid that by simply remembering to put on some disposable gloves before you clean the inside of your grill. You will keep your hands clean, you will save time because at the end when you're done, you'll simply peel them off and throw them away with whatever stuff you are throwing away from the inside of your grill. And finally, tip number five, is using Barkeeper's Friend to clean the inside of your pots and pans, especially your stainless steel pots and pans. I want you to take a look at the inside of this all clad stainless steel pot You'll see that in the bottom, there are some markings from the last thing I cooked in there. I think it might've been some rice that I made to accompany some barbecue. It leaves some marks in the bottom, kind of a rainbow color and a pattern of rice. Now that is not gonna ruin this pan. And in fact, if you cook something acidic in this pan, it might actually take it right out. But, you know, occasionally I like to clean that out and you can do it with the help of Barkeeper's Friend. All you have to do is get your pot or pan wet Put a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend in the bottom. Take yourself a wet scrubber like this, a non-abrasive scrubber, and just wet that powder in the bottom of the potter pan and just scrub it around. This cleaner is slightly abrasive, but it also has oxalic acid in it. And that I think is the key ingredient to taking off any of this residue that you see on the inside of your stainless steel pots and pans. Make sure you get into the corners very well. You mainly have to focus on the bottom. The sides don't seem to do this too much, but come up on those as well. You do not want to take this to the outside of the pot, this nice shiny finish here. You don't want to scratch that up with an abrasive of any kind. So just restrict your activity here to the inside. Go ahead and rinse this off with some nice warm water. And here you can see the pot looks like brand new. Well, I hope you found those tips useful. I sure do. I appreciate you watching my videos. I appreciate you very much. If you please like and subscribe to my videos, it helps other people find them. Until next time, take care everybody. Bye-bye. sauce on my face, on the right, right side. Did I get it? No, I didn't get it. Got it? No. Are you messing with me?